Hey guys, and how's it going? Hey, we're going to continue on this Case 580 I picked up a couple of weeks ago. Kind of as is condition, and I'm really not familiar with them. So, uh, the last video we went through, just kind of educating ourselves on it, what it needed, gave us ourselves a little bit of a shopping list, and fixed a bunch of electrical uh, components on it. Well, since then and now, I was able to get parts. So we can kind of continue on with more of the mechanical parts of it. Let's have at it. And what we end up getting was the cylinders rebuilt. I was going to try doing it myself, and it's a good thing I didn't because they had to actually replace one of the rods and I think do some brazing and repair on the other one on the rebuild. Got fingers for the bucket. We got some mirrors. We got pins for a plow blade we need to attach to it and a couple of uh, relays for electrical components. We need to get those cylinders on. And the other biggest thing is probably trying to get that plow set up on that bucket. That was on there at one time, but the brackets that went to it are no longer. So we're gonna have to try to come up with something and fabricate that. So I'll be on, hopefully on today's video. But first, I think we should probably start with these cylinders, getting them on the outriggers and getting that part set up. So let's see what we got going up, going on out back. So that thing right there, and it's a part of crime on the other side are called the outriggers. That's where the backhoe when you are digging, it stabilizes the back of the tractor. Well, they were leaking profusely when the old owner had it. Took them off, tried rebuilding them, or at least tried getting them apart and couldn't do it. And so I bought it with the cylinders removed. And Brian and I struggled to go get those tied up into their position. And now we've got to figure out by myself how to drop those <laughs> without killing myself because they're probably uh, about 400 pounds a piece of you, my guess. So let's get them on the ground because we're not able to attach them. The cylinder goes from there to right there. Well, if I was smart enough to have the forklift facing the other direction, it would have helped at least with one of them, lowering them down. So I may just do just that. I mean, go pull the tractor out, swap it around. It's like 10 degrees outside and it is a balmy 55 in here, so I don't let all my heat out. <laughs> you know, I don't want to undo that turnbuckle. You know, as soon as I go to crack that thing, it's going to want to spin out of there. I'm going to try getting it. Come on. Yeah, it doesn't look sketchy at all, huh? Get that upper one undone. this out of here I don't break the back window oh boy. Let's see if we can get the pin out of the other side yeah at least that's off now the fun part is to try to slowly work that come along Drop that leg. Yeah. <laughs> in a great spot for your hand not to be hitting. This thing's gonna slip right off. It's heavier as it goes down too, you know.
<laughs> uh -oh. Something's failing. wish the release wasn't back there. Almost there. One more. Yeah. I was gonna slide on there. I know it is. I don't know what's holding that hook there. Safe now. This one should go a little easier. I shouldn't have said that, should I? under there just in case we need to tweak it a little bit to get the cylinder on. Maybe I'll clean them up in a wire wheel, knock some of the rust off them. Well they look almost the same. Except for the fittings on the top go opposite directions. So I'm not quite sure which one's left and which one's right. <laughs> not that I don't think we can't turn it, but usually they're kind of wrenched down to where they go, you know. I'm gonna say Probably the line, the upper line comes around and curves maybe something like that. <laughs> Find out. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. Okay. Doesn't fit. <laughs> that one. Caps off. Stretch her out. You don't think the fitting should have went downwards, do you? You think that's right? Should probably look at a picture, huh? That would be my guess. Again, I didn't take it apart. They're already off when I got it. The only other thing I'm thinking is if it's rotated and it faces downwards, it might be out of more harm's way. Come on, baby. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm going to have to shoot a little air in there. Yeah, see if a little, little bit of this can get it first. There it goes. <laughs> This is the hair too far. Oh boy. Damn. Get it. That's in the hole. Well, I knew it was going to be a 50 50 shot, but here's the thing that lower hose is pretty taut already, and you got to figure that thing still has another travel of about that much. I think we'll be yanking on the hose. Plus it's exposed. Now that I'm looking at them, they're not the same. This one is located right here. <laughs> now there's my luck. I gotta go put that one there. At least that one's stretched out for the other side. I kind of temporarily put it on there. Didn't run any fluid through it yet and the fittings are loose. Let's fire up the forklift. It's still under the pad. Let's lift it up and kind of run it through its motion. Let's make sure those hoses aren't gonna hit anywhere.
about it. You guys can't even see, can you? Let's see what we got. And it's probably got another three or four inches of travel. I was worried about that one hose kind of getting into the tire, but it looks okay. All right, we'll commit to that. We'll get everything bolted up and clipped down and uh, pop the other one on the other side. Come on. You're almost there. I need a little bit bigger pliers. I think a screwdriver and a hammer will fix the rest of that. This one's just a baby bent, but should be able to get that one on there. Come on. Note to Santa. I need a bigger pair of pliers. Pop in there. Good. Well, the other side is on, but there's one problem. I am missing one of those rubber snubbers. It's probably leaning on the ground where the tractor was, and I just missed it. So let's go up in the stash, see if we can find something that can uh, suffice. So over in this land should be a stash of all things rubber. <laughs> yeah, I like this bucket right here, maybe. I doubt we're going to find anything that's kind of great for it, but even if we could slice like a piece of hose and wrap it around it, what's that? That's too thin. Like a piece of rubber, we could wrap it around it just to protect it for now and then I'll order one. Let's go with that piece of hose. Maybe that. Maybe a combination of a couple of them. We could wrap it a couple times. Ooh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, maybe something with those might work. I'll keep looking though. I guess worst case, you could probably wrap it with a piece like serpentine belt or something too. So I think if we slice that, that'll be the inner. I don't know if that's going to be Maybe the other end of it, and it's kind of thin. So we just hunk off some of that, some of that, and we'll put a slice down so we can feed them over the hose. We'll see how it kind of lays down. If we can get that around there and just get the strap around that, that might be okay. If not, we'll go with plan B, which will be a piece of serpentine hose. We'll just kind of wrap it around a couple of times and clamp it. dark over here but let's see how we can do go with that one first and this only doesn't really move that much it's not like one of the ones that are you know constantly in motion but if we can get her from chafing you know it's kind of tall I don't know if the straps gonna want to be able to reach around that I think we can get it So just keep an eye on that and we'll see if it wants to kind of pop out of there or, or chase on the if it wants to chase on uh, you know chafe on something that's the whole idea we're just trying to protect it from that and getting into the tire let's go fire it up see how they do we're gonna have air in it at first i know that but... All right. Oh, 
one looks okay too. Dark. And I uh, bring a light with me. They look like they're all out of harm's way. Alright, let's go get her doing her thing. Make her dance. Well, we got the back end where it is. Let's uncurl that bucket a little bit and we'll take care of these fingers. Let's knock a little caca off of it. I guess these can break off too, especially if you're not running it with, uh, I don't know if you consider these consumables. My question is, does it go like that or like that? I'm looking at the other one. You can see the curve on it. See how that one's curved? I'm not sure. Does it matter? I would think, actually, does it come out to the same point? That's the way they have it. I would think like that, wouldn't you? Kind of straight on. That's my guess. So here's my thought. It's a 50-50 shot, right? And I screwed up putting the cylinders on, so I'm, I'm due for one that's correct. <laughs> and worst case scenario, we just flip them over. I actually bought 10 of them. I figure if I lose a couple or snap a couple or whatever happens to them, I got some sacrificial, watch your toes, lambs. You got like a weird pin in there, like a, like a gushy metal on two sides and gushy in the middle. I need to get my punch back. Hmm. Again, watch your toes. I take a minute, go clean all them up. We gotta go clean out the little little poopy holes in them. Those are packed solid, you can tell those. Actually, they may even still have pits of pin in them, right? clean all this crap up we'll start putting them on so we try the harder one first which is gonna be the middle ones so you can't really get a good hit on them I'm also kind of wondering if we're gonna have to maybe make up a jig like a C clamp or something these guys are kind of like a preload they're squishy and you got to get them to go get hammered in and they got like a, a nipple on each side that holds it but the Middle ones you can't get a swing on with a hammer, probably. Let's see if we can squish that down. That yeah, might work, no problem. Oops, step back a little. Or they just go right in. <laughs> Battery decided to cut out on me right at the very end. That actually worked fairly easy. 
Unless they're going to continue to be the same. Let's go find out. That definitely seemed like they all went in way too easy. I would expect more of a fight than that. But we're going to see when mom digging. Could be why I was missing so many before. I don't know if those holes are egged out in the center. A little on the large side, but... I'll see. I guess, you know, this way it is not. You're digging. It's always trying to push towards the tooth. It's just when you're either like, you know, digging backwards, it wants to go yank it off. We'll find out. Ain't that pretty. I got spears. Well, I'd say for our next bit of fun is we're gonna to try to get that mounted on that. So let's get it wheeled in front of it. I might have to go up a little bit with those jack stands, but again, it's really just have to be concerned about getting it centered and where the pins go on. Not the angle is kind of by how it gets chained to the top of the bucket where the blade sits. Kind of jockeyed it into position and marked center on the bucket and center on the plow with that silver line. Unfortunately, it's lining right up to where those bolts are. That kind of sucks. I was hoping it would, you know, line up in between two of them. So we got to figure out how to make a bracket. I don't know, like an L bracket that uses these bolts, catches it, and then maybe has caps on the end of it. To, to grab these. Plus, I don't want to have to be able to take it off during the summertime. And if you're digging with a loader, as long as the you know the bottom of the blade is clear and the front of the edge is clear, it, it'll cause a little bit of you know material backing up behind it. But I'd kind of like to not have to go screw with taking it off all the time. So we've got to come up with something to tie that. I wonder if do you think we should back it up into no. This is a stronger part of the bucket too. This is, although very thick, it's, I don't think it's as thick as the material is here. Plus I, I think I want to stay fairly close to these bolts for strength. All right, let's go shopping for a piece of like angle iron. And we'll just lay it on there and try to come up maybe with some ideas. Let's go shopping. Let's see what we got. I think we're gonna probably want at least as thick as the ears that are on the plow itself. That's pretty nice. It's not going to be tall enough, though. But like that thickness. Piece of angle. It's kind of thin, though. I think I have some around the around the corner. Trailer hitch would probably do, too, huh? I got a piece there. It's kind of thin. That might work right there. That one. Yeah. That's heavy enough. Let's go drag that out and stick it in the bucket. It already comes with this one pre-drilled hole. <laughs> Would angle? Would angle do it for us or I wonder if we were to take and slice two slices like this and then bore a hole through it. How would that do? You know, one on each side. That way the pin is kind of supported better. Not that we couldn't do it long ways too. We just put two pieces in it. I wonder if that would be stronger. Plus, would it matter really if I take the blade and I, I kick it like two inches over? So say if we move it kind of like right here. And what we do, we, we go bolts a piece of angle from here 
to here or at least flat plate going across the bottom we could build off of that but I think most of the energy is going to want to be to want to curl it back right hmm I wonder if we just yeah too bad it's like right on right on top of them it's it, it would be like yeah, if I move it like on that one it's on the center of it just missed that one by a hair. Can we can we fudge it? Can we get hmm. what can we do to get? Let's think about it a little bit. Come up with a solution. Might go for a sandwich. Chew on it. Five guys fixed it. Delicious burger. And a strawberry shake. So I took the hydraulic lines and just threw them over the bucket. I want to see, make sure everything is going to reach. I don't see them being a problem. They're going to tap into somewhere up on the uh, curl of the bucket. Now I was looking what's going to support the blade. Like normally on a truck, you have a, like a triangle that comes out of the front. It's got a hydraulic cylinder underneath it and it kind of comes almost straight up from this point and lifts and lowers the blade from those chains. But as you can see, we don't have anything there. So something has to come from the plow back to the bucket, chain-wise, to kind of support it. So I looked at these. They're way too short. They're not even going to make it, you know. But it did come with this. So I'm trying to figure out how this would have got incorporated. Yeah, right? I know I agree. What a weird kind of setup. It's got three springs daisy chain together so I don't know if it seems like a lot of spring usually you just have like a solid chain and if you bottom out the chain gets slack and the, and the blade can come back down again I'm not quite sure what those will be hooked hooked up to and then it's got like that doesn't take any strength so this is probably all out of the all out of it because that would do nothing Right? That would just snap right off. You try putting a load on that. I wonder if battery's flashing. I wonder if that hook. Let's see if these two hooks are the same length. Instead of going. Yeah. I have a feeling that those two hooks hang on the front chain and that loop up there hooks onto the two uh knuckles on the back of the blade. Let's go try that. Yes, yeah, so we've got a hook there and a hook there, right? So that's what that loop of chain can go around to those two. The springs can go this way and then we grab these two chains and then we, maybe the springs in the middle because the, the chain's going on an angle upward. If it takes any shock, it just kind of takes a little bit of flex out of the middle. Let's try laying that on there and see how it looks. Yeah, I don't have a taut or anything, but just trying to get our idea. I think so. We wrapped around that hook and that hook. We could probably go back one link and kind of square that off a little bit. And then I just grabbed the two chains that were there. Let's uh, try sliding that blade outward a little. That's a little bit more of a straight angle. I think, I think that's pretty close though. I think we can square it off a little bit better, but I think that's kind of... It's got a lot of weight on it though, huh? You're, you're lifting up on that. I don't know, that might be okay. It had to be something similar to that, right? I was trying to figure out how close we can get it into the bucket, because of course, you know, the closer you get the plow in the bucket, the... Uh, less of an angle that's going to be to lift up on it we got to remember the thing still has to be able to angle so i don't think we can close that distance up much more than that or that blade is not really going to be able to kick over to one side all the way so when you're going down 
the road. You gotta be able to roll the snow to the side, not just push it. Hmm. All right, we can get all that out of there. I think we should start going back to coming up with a solution for that. I gotta change it up a little bit. I found that big flat piece of steel. It's probably six inches wide. I think I'm gonna go punch a bunch of holes in it, try to with a plasma cutter, where those bolts are, and we'll bolt that down. And then wherever we line up, which is gonna be, you know, what was it, this bolt? Yeah. We'll put a piece of angle, that angle. We'll put one this way, and we'll put one this way. So it'll, it'll be an L, and then a reverse L. We'll leave a gap in between there for still having access to the bolt. Because the pin is pretty wide. The pin's like five inches wide. So we could have some slop in there. Actually, it's probably a good thing instead of having it snugged right up on it. Give it a little bit of room for stuff to kind of move and uh, not get broken. So let's get out of an impact gun, get some of these bolts out of here. Because it, it's smooth on the other side. I don't know what the, their setup is. I don't know if there's a recess in there or what. But let's get them out of there and we're going to need something taller to replace it. So let's see what we got and see if we can replace it with something. See how well these come off. That's a strange setup, huh? I guess it really wouldn't matter. We, we could put these back in when we're not using that during the summertime. And uh, just get like a regular nut and bolt combination. It's squared off to go lock in there though. I don't think I have anything like that. We're gonna need something about, about that long, times five. The land of hardware. Now that's the size we need. I found five of these are the next size down. That's about the largest I can find. There's one right here. But I need to find the nuts for them. I need nuts. I'm looking for... There's one right there. Hopefully, get enough of those. We'll have something to kind of bolt it together. Worst case, I can go to a hardware store and get something that's um, the exact size of the hole down below. But I think if we crank down on it with an impact gun, we should be okay. Especially if we just punch the hole smaller for the top plate so there's not much room to wiggle around so how's your eyes see any too small all right well i'm gonna hunt there's another bolt there's a stash of bolts just need nuts only found three and i gotta we got a pail full of um, other hardware. Might be able to find some in there. Just need two more. Hope they're in there. Got it. Had to get out the heavy guns. Three quarter. That still wouldn't do it. I just don't have an impact socket. So it might just explode that socket. Let's find out. Ah, there it goes. It just needed an eight foot pipe. No problem. That's a little stuck though. Didn't see that coming, did you? Not at all. Problem is the mass is too hot for it. Can't, can't get it to glow. Son of a. Plus, it's all peened over from rocks and gravel running off. Well, we would just keep escalating to one of us wins. I hope it's me. Let's try taking the plasma cutter and just burning off the nut. I'm trying to save the bolt. The problem is it's a specialty bolt. Let's see what we get. Well, 
wasn't going to give up without a fight though, huh? I win. Hey, look at the bolt. It really doesn't damage the threads. Yeah, a little bit right there, but that'll clean up. Just gotta get a nut for it. Five more to go. So what do you think the chances are that I'm going to be able to get all six of those bolts to pop up through that plate <laughs> and get bolted together? Let's see what we get. Who's your daddy? Nice. So I'm thinking something like this, we, we cut them, you know, it's probably the same width, why not? We can get a good weld on it all the way around. We put one on one side and one on the other. Actually, it's going to hit that, huh? So we got to shorten it up a little bit. And then we'll just use that, that lower hole. We'll bore a hole right through two of them. We'll make that be the pivot. But we got to back it off. Yeah, probably so about right there. So we'll make them whatever that equals out to probably about four inches long and that way I'll leave a gap in between we still get the bolt out the nut out and change it over if we want to plus if we just want to leave it there just take the plow off during the uh, come in the spring and you want to shovel stuff if you want to scoop up dirt first there's nothing really intruding on the bottom edge because they're kind of recessed they popped up into the hole the the bottom of the bolt and there's nothing like if the angle was this way, all the dirt would build up behind it. All it's going to have is a piece of angle with air passage through it and another piece of angle going this way. So it can possibly still work, according to how much you're using it, right? In worst case, you just run with an impact gun, buzz them off, and put the other bolts back in. All right, so I got to cut myself a bunch of those slabs, and then got to bore holes in those too, larger even. Those are, that's a one-inch pin, I think.
unfortunately it's as slow as it goes, you better be a little bit slower, but... Work what you got, right? Let's see what we did. This looks like it's going to be pretty stout. Got to clean them up and weld them. I ended up uh, making another bracket and going a smaller size on the hole so the pin doesn't have so much slop in it. If we find that it wiggles around, I kind of doubt it. Like, look how much metal is here. And we're double that around it. So. You know, this is a tab that they're kind of going by. I was thinking we could, you know, we could always bridge back here and back here if we need to stiffen it up a little bit, but I think it's going to be pretty stout. Maybe we just pull the pins and we can still get the hardware out. I like it. We could also, if we find it's a little too sloppy, we could probably put some shims in on the sides of the pin and probably should take something to take that slop up, huh? And then put the key in it. Take a piece of pipe or something, we'll cut it, we'll slide it on there and then put the pin in so the pin's not walking so much. Getting there. That's some thick stuff. I'm gonna have to turn her up to 11. Peg that puppy. Well, that one's a little bit prettier than that one. I don't think either one's gonna fall off. We'll let that cool down a little bit and then we can uh, reel a plow blade over to it, put the pins in it, maybe we'll hook that chain up. Yes, maybe I should clean that up and zap that while we're here, huh? All right, let's drop it down, see what we get. It's terrible. Yeah, we get adjusted the chain height and tension too, you know. We want the loader much higher than the blade. You know, yeah, that's got to do all the work, not that. So I, you kind of want that. We should probably get that out of the way, get the jack stands out, and we'll lower it to where it touches the ground. And I'm hoping to have, you know, 68 inches behind the. Uh, under the bucket. Let's see what we get. 
It's got a decent amount of float. It needs, and it's not the A-frame doing it, it's just the pivot point. Because as you're going over the train, the train isn't always flat, so it has to have some give. I'd say it's probably eh, 10 inches of at the edges of the blade. Let's get her off the jack stands. It looks pretty good that's about what I wanted I see the back drag blade is touching the back drag blade looks like it's touching before the front blade the area I have to do is gravel I wonder if that actually will be a benefit to us or not plus I'm sure that cut edge is pretty worn out but that's a good height that's about what I wanted you figure a pickup truck when it's mounted to it is about that same height too if I want to change it, I could just lift the loader up, put more length in the chain. It'll allow the blade to come down too. So I guess until it gets moved around in the snow and see how it does, we could probably leave well enough alone. So we got to work on the pivot of the blade. And I think we should probably take some WD, some scotch spray. We'll get rid of those pits that are on those cylinders so we're not killing whatever is left of those seals that are on there and then what we'll do is we'll lift it up we can probably push it by hand and we'll see how close we come to the bucket <laughs> not that we're going to change it now but let's see what we get I'm not going to get rid of the pits, but it's just going to take the high sides off so when it goes through the seal, it's not scraping the top of it. The one closest to us has some pretty major pitting on the bottom. Probably just from sitting out in the weather. It'll do for now, I guess, in our articulation. Looks pretty good. I think we got about six inches between hitting the loader bucket. So that looks fine. That's full articulation. And I know the tire pressure is low on the that side or left side tire, but it looks pretty level, which is good because when you're scraping, you, when you angle it, you don't want it digging one way or the other because it'll, it'll just dig a trough, you know. I think it should work out just fine. He's got a bunch of crap in the center. It'll probably just weld a plate over that just kind of clean it up a little bit it's busted out there it's busted out there i'll do my best to kind of beat them back into submission and if we find a better plow door in the summertime we'll kind of get that because this one took a hard hit too this one's got I don't know, it shows it looks like it hit a telephone pole or something <laughs> it's got a yeah, about 20 inches in you can see that lump the blade on this side is really kicked back on the frame but it'll do for now. Yeah, I was looking at the difference in the height of the two blades. I figured it out because it wiggles. <laughs> so when you're going forward, this blade just flops out of the way. And then when you back drag and you're going backwards, pulling snow away from, like, from a garage door, this can't go anymore forward and it catches the material and pulls it backwards instead of trying to do it with this where it just kind of wants to ride up off of it. All right, now I guess we got to figure out 
the hoses. What we got is the two coming from the plow blades. Plow blade. So those two lines are they're connected together right now. And then we have the curl. We're going to disconnect the curl for the bucket and the bucket's going to stay fixed. So that's our two lines to feed the two cylinders on the curl. These two hoses run that cylinder. These two hoses run across and run this cylinder. So it's got quick connects. I see two on that one and two on that one. I also see tie wraps. Actually, I see a blue. I see a blue and it looks like a yellow. Kind of a weird combo. And I see a blue and a pink, red, pink. I say probably we go clean up some of those fittings and see if we see any other colors. Maybe it'll give us a hint what got connected to what. But essentially, we have to get both cylinders disconnected. And I think if you just leave them unplugged, there's check valves in each one of them. So that, because you don't want the cylinder to move. You don't want that cylinder allowing fluid to go one way or another. Or else, as soon as you go to pick the front of the tractor up, it's, it's just going to droop down. And the same thing we said down you want the bucket fixed wherever you leave it so let's go clean them up and see what we got see if any colors kind of pop up and so this one has a, a yellow i'm going to call that yellow tie wrap that one's got a yellow tie wrap that one's got a blue and it looks like the only ones that have been getting taken apart is that one and that one and these are kind of rusty not saying that it wasn't but my guess is that yellow, that yellow male, is going to go with that yellow female. They would get plugged together. So I'll leave this one open and that one open. So would that work? So how would that work? We need one of each of these. So we would have this female, uh, male rather, off of this one. And then off of this leg somewhere, we, we would need a female. And that is the blue one. So the blue one is the female that we're going to use. So what stops the bucket from curling though? Would it stop the bucket? That's what I'm kind of questioning. We got one of each, but then isn't the other side still hooked up to the, to the loader? Or can we just unplug the other one? Can we just unplug the other ones? I leave them capped. Yeah, I bet you that's what, that's what happens. That's why these have caps on them. Yeah, that's my guess. All right, let's try it, see what happens. <laughs> Watch your toes when, when you unplug them. I got a floor jack underneath it and the blade's on the ground, so I'm just worried about unplugging it. If one of those, each each end of each hose is a quick connect. It's not like a, a disconnect. It's not, fluid can't come out of it when you pop the line off. They got them hooked up how I think they go. We have two cylinders capped off, two hoses capped off. We have the lower, <laughs> the lower of this cylinder connected to the higher of that cylinder. I don't know if that's correct, but they both had the yellow high wraps on them. So that's, I'm going to try it. If not, I'm just going to leave them uncapped. And I'm not quite sure what the reasoning would be behind that. And then again, we have one side connected to one and one side connected to the other as far as for the curl. Let's fire it up and see what we get.
You gotta hammer it a little bit, see if anything kind of jostles itself loose. We're gonna now than never, right? Only thing I saw was the uh, back drag blade backed itself off. That's kind of what. That's probably how it goes down the trail. Looks good. I want to get rid of some of the excess chain. Looks like he was just trying to save it with all that crap. But we'll cut off some of that excess, get it out of the way. I don't know if this hose is kind of trapped. No. Yeah. So we'll save some of it. We'll leave a foot or two on it, but we'll get rid of all that excess that's on there. Looks pretty good, huh? I don't see it pissing any fluid out of the cylinders, neither. At least not, at least not right now. I think that's the one that was really bad. How about our couplers? They all will piss a little bit when you disconnect them, but they look pretty good. I think that blue bungee cord is probably to take the excess ones and kind of just loop them up here and tie it to it. So I'll do that. Nice. I think we got it. Watch how my whale's busted right off. <laughs> yeah, they look pretty good. That patch up top scabbed over the the boo boo. Alright, what's next? Chain for the horde. Considering I don't have a horse farm, and that's what all this crap in and crap is in front of the grill. When we take a screw gun, see if we can get all that crap off of there and hopefully there's a, a decent grill behind it. If not, maybe we'll just leave that the one that's behind it on it. Let's go see. I'd say there was at least 40 drywall screws in there. I'm sure I didn't get them all. We're gonna find out. It's a good place for gloves. Like 9,000 stitches. There's one. <laughs> Top right. Go we'll buzz a couple out of the other side, I guess I missed. That definitely looks a little better. I see a little boo-boo in the, the rubber there and there, but nothing terrible. And I'm not sure why there's four screws, bolts, on that lower left. But I think we'll leave those well enough alone. I can breathe a little bit better. Plus it just looks better. Well, I took a second to make up some battery hold downs and got that squared away. And then cleaned the windows. What do you say we uh, throw on some mirrors? Right about there. Right about, I think right about here. I did say throw on, didn't I? Well, other than hitting about 200 grease fittings <laughs> that it has, I did end up getting one of those little power grease guns. You pump up the center of it and pull the trigger. Uh, I think we're gonna kind of call it right now. I wish it was. I got it done a couple of days earlier. We had snow to go move around. We could have tried seeing how it operated, but I got to get it over to the property for the next stone storm when it comes. So I got to get this kind of wrapped up. Uh, there's more I can do. Like I said, you know, there's, there's a bunch of other stuff to go chase. Most of the wiring has been taken care of. Oh, the four wheel drive does have a switch on it. For those who watched the first part of the video, trying to figure out what was going on. They it is the bottom rocker by the uh, control panel, but somebody unplugged the servo underneath on the differential, I guess it's going to be. And I have a feeling it's hard getting in and out of four-wheel drive, so for now I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to go screw with that. That would be what I labeled everything with a marker too. But that one's the 4x4 four four, and it is dis disconnected out front. All the lights are set up and working. The rear wiper is not working. I don't know if it's the switch or the wiper motor or wiring going to it. And everything else has been buttoned up and cleaned up. Radio works. Should, have, should pull the headliner down at some point and it smells like mice up in there. So that still needs to be addressed uh, along with the uh, cab light that's on the switch over there. I think we got her good enough to go. I ordered a strut for this door. And at some point I'm going to have to get front tires for it. But those are Things that are not going to stop it from getting used right now. But I'm glad we got what we did. We got pretty much all the mechanicals done. The cylinders are done on the back. The teeth are done on the bucket. I aired up the tires, got them even, got the plow set up squared away. 
the electrical's gone through. Kind of get a little bit of education on it. Oh, and there's about 20 people that sent me links to the owner's manual or a PDF file of the owner's manual. I had found the same thing too, but I want to say thank you to everybody that sent me a link to that to get educated on it. Cool machine. Hopefully I don't hurt myself with it. <laughs> or if I do, at least catch it on video, right? A little bit of fabrication. And figuring out how that all that stuff works. Alright guys, with that, I think I'm going to go sign off. I want to thank y'all for hanging out with me. I may make a video, if we do get some decent snow, trying to go run this thing along and see how it does. But that would be for another day. But for this one, I think we're going to make a call it. Alright guys, thanks for hanging out with me. Take care. Come on now. Did you really think I'd let it leave without putting a spinner on it? Just no better. Now we can go cruising for chicks. Yeah. Yeehaw.